So now let's think about first order systems. In fact, particularly we want to think about the response of a first order system to some kind of input, which is generally going to be a step. So a first order system means that it can be described by a first order differential equation. So we'd have something like this. A dx dt plus bx equals f of t. Now we're going to do Laplace transform analysis of this and we're going to first of all assume zero initial conditions. So taking Laplace transforms of both sides then we end up with something, well we end up with this. Um, so a is a scaling factor so dx dt goes to s capital X of s, b of x just goes to b capital X of s and f of t goes to capital F of s. And we can factorise out the x of s and then we can basically slightly rearrange that and we end up with what x of s is in terms of um, f of s and it's basically f of s divided by a s plus b. If we drive this system now by a unit step starting at t equals zero, <coughs> that basically means we're driving by a constant and um, which starts at t equals zero. So the Laplace transform of a step of unit, unity step is one over s. So we just multiply that by the transfer function. We end up with the response in the s domain. So we could, if we wish to do so, we can rewrite this slightly. I'm just going to be doing this in order to write it in terms of something where we can actually explicitly specify what we're going to call a time constant. So let's divide through by b to start with. Um, and then I'm going to write it in the following form. So I'm going to write the equation rather than 1 divided by s, a s plus b. I'm going to write it in the form of k divided by s, tau s plus 1. And in this particular case, you see that the a divided by b is the tau, which is the time constant, and 1 over b goes to k, which is a, which is a constant. Now we're going to do partial fraction expansion of this. So in order to do partial fraction expansion, we have to look at the denominator, the s, tau s plus 1. So we've got one term which is going to be something over s and another term which is going to be something over uh, tau s plus 1. And we've got to find, in this case, what the a and the b are. <coughs> so as we always do with partial fraction um, or expansions, or certainly the way I do it with partial fraction um, um, expansions is to do it such that we're going to equate coefficients and in order to be able to do that we have to have the same denominator. So we look at the, the term tau s plus 1 and what we need is is we need an s on the, on the denominator there as well. So we multiply the top and the bottom of that expression with an s. So we have a s divided by tau s plus 1 times s and the b over s term, we multiply the top and bottom by t, t, tau s plus 1. Right. So now we have a rewritten it in terms of um, a common denominator. And because of that, we can then directly equate <coughs> the k to the numerator on the new expression, which is a plus b tau s plus b. Now, by equating coefficients, we see that there are no coefficients on the left-hand side of s. Therefore, b has got to equals k. And correspondingly, because there are no um, coefficients in s on the, on the left-hand side, 0 equals a plus b tau. And we can use that to rearrange and say a equals minus b tau. So a equals minus k tau. So... Starting from our expression that we had x of s, k over k divided by s minus kt divided by tau s plus 1, we can write that in terms of k, open brackets, 1 divided by s minus tau divided by tau s plus 1. And we can divide through as well, if we wish to do, by, by the tau for the second term. Now we can actually look at those expressions now, and um, using Laplace transform tables, we will be able to write down 
the time domain equivalent um, of, of, of these two expressions. First of all, we know that 1 over s goes to basically unity step starting at t equals 0. And we know the form of 1 divided by s minus a goes to, uh, is equivalent to, well, goes to e to the at. Thus, the inverse Laplace transform is going to be k multiplied by 1 divided, uh, sorry, 1 take away e to the, the minus tau, sorry, the minus t divided by tau. So, so you can see in this expression, right, um, the minus a corresponds to minus 1 divided by tau. That's where we get the, uh, the minus uh, 1 divided by tau element. And the other, then the t is what we had from the e to the at. So that gives us the nice time solution for this expression. We could easily simulate that in MATLAB. <clears throat> um, we can just basically build it up as a transfer function, k divided by tau s plus 1, and drive it with a step, and we'll get a nice um, step response, which looks like this. It starts off at 0 and rises up and gradually goes to 1 to unity. So we see that the response, therefore, is given by this scaled 1 minus e to the minus t divided by tau. Um, and this basically is a typical kind of charging curve for a capacitor. Now, what we can actually see from, from this um, is that, well, we've got this t and we've got the tau. And the tau, we're going to say, as we've said, is the time constant. So... Let's say we wait now for a time constant. We want to know what value this actual um, expression gives us. So what we do is we substitute t equals tau into the expression, into this expression here. So we end up with a function of f of t equals k e minus... Sorry, f of t k equals 1 minus e to the minus 1, because we've got the, the tau on the bottom, uh, the t... At the, the t here cancels out with a tau here. And we can numerically evaluate that, right? So f of t equals k, 1 minus, and it's about 0.378. So we end up with about 0.632. So what this is basically telling us, for this system, if we give a the, the step response, um, if we wait a time constant in time, the system reaches about 63.2% of the maximum value. We can also differentiate this um, expression. So we know that if we differentiate um, an exponential, we basically get, using the chain rule, we can get the, the form of the exponential stays the same. So if we differentiate this expression here, the first bit disappears, and the second bit basically comes down to 1 divided by tau times e to the minus t divided by tau. So if we put in a time of 0, e to the 0 equals 1. So what we find is the initial slope is going to be 1 over tau. So basically from this equation, we can see a couple of things. First of all, we can see that after a time constant, right, that's the time constant here, we reach 60, oh, sorry, oh, that's the time constant here, we reach 63% of the value, and the initial slope is given by 1 by tau. Now we can now relate this to an RC network. So let's add up voltages in this RC network. The source voltage here, V of S, is going to be the voltage across uh, the resistor plus the re voltage across the capacitor. So we know that the voltage across the resistor is going to be IR from Ohm's law. And we know the voltage across the... Well, we know the current in the capacitor is going to be, let's say, well, it's, it's the rate of change of, of, of charge, but it's also C, D, V, C, D, T. So let's write down... <coughs> um, um, the voltages. So 
in terms of, of, of now we're going to substitute in the current from, from the voltage across the capacitor. We have now VR equals IR, which is basically C dV C dT times R. Therefore, the voltage applied equals the voltage across um, the resistor, which is given by this expression RC dV. C dt plus the voltages across the capacitor, keeping it all in terms of voltages. We just slightly rearrange this and we end up with the expression um, the rate of change of the voltage across the capacitor equals 1 divided by Rc multiplied by the source voltage take away the capacitor voltage. Right, And that's the first order differential equation. We can then take the Laplace transform of this with zero initial conditions, that's quite easy to do. Um, the v, the d v c d t goes to s uh, v c of s, uh, and these just basically change to the um, the s domain for values, and this is a scaling factor. We can collect all the the, the, the voltage um, due to the capacitor um, across the capacitor together onto one side. <clears throat> so we just basically move this the v c here to the other side, so it becomes additive. And then we factorize out um, the VC, and then we can divide both sides by um, this S plus 1 divided by RC, and we end up with the voltage across the capacitor in terms of the voltage across uh, the source and all of the parameters of the system. Multiplying through, we can simplify that slightly again, so VC equals um, V of S of S divided by S RC plus 1. So if we drive by a step, right, a voltage V at time equals zero, then the V of S basically becomes V divided by S. So V is now a fixed parameter um, divided by S, which is the, uh, the Laplace transform um, effect effectively of a step. And we can see, therefore, substituting that in, that the V of C equals V divided by um, S times tau S plus 1, where tau equals RC. And we know, because we just did it, that the, uh, the solution to that um, in the time domain goes to K1 minus E to the minus T divided by tau. And substituting in um, appropriately, we see the K is equal to the V that we had. So the, the voltage across the capacitor equals V times 1 minus E to the minus T divided by tau. So this is basically the charging voltage across the capacitor. We can look at the current in the circuit in a similar way. right? We've got our expression for uh, the rate of change of capacitor voltage. And we've got our expression for the current that we had before. right? So I equals C dV C dT. So what we can do is we can stick in um, the dvc dt from, from the first expression here into the second expression here. So we get the current now, I t equals c, in brackets, 1 divided by rc, um, multiplied by voltage across the, the, the source voltage, take away the capacitor voltage. Um, but VC, we can also, we can get rid of that and put it in terms of um, the integrated current through the capacitor multiplied by 1 divided by its capacitance. So we substitute the VC value in here to give us a, a, a term in current which can replace the V of C because we basically what we want to do is just have things in terms of the current and, terms of, uh, and in terms of the, of the supply voltage. So we do that, then we collect together all the current terms, right? So we've got a current term here. Um, we've got the integral of the current term here equals what's effectively the driving term here. We multiply, basically, um, well, we simplify this. We cancel that C with that C, cancel that C with that C. 
And now we take Laplace transforms with zero initial conditions because it's much easier to manipulate these things after we've done the Laplace transforms. So I of t goes to I of s. Because this is now, this one over rc is a constant, so that stays as a constant. The integral of i t dt goes to I of s divided by s. And this is vs over t, uh, sorry, vs t over r goes to v, uh, vs over vs s across uh, divided by r. We factorise out the current, um, and we then basically want to know what the current is um, by dividing away the factor in front of the current. So we divide by the one plus one, uh, one plus one divided by SRC term, and we can simplify that somewhat. If we drive this then with a voltage step of v at time equals zero, again our um, the Laplace transform of our driving function is V divided by S, <clears throat> so let's multiply it by that. Um, effectively, that just gets rid of this S up here and multiplies it and puts a V in, in, in there instead. Um, we can slightly rearrange again. <clears throat> Taking Laplace transforms again, what, what we see this time is we've just got um, a simpler expression than we had before. We've got a, we've got the, the scaling factor here which corresponds, well, there's a scaling factor to get to a sort of one. S minus A in this case, we see that we've got no terms in front of S, so it, this corresponds directly. And then basically the, um, the A in the expression corresponds to the minus one divided by tau. So in this case, we've got the current given by um, V over R, the scaling factor times this exponential decay. So, the voltage then across the capacitor is this slow charging up um, to, to, to the target value, which is the applied voltage, and we see this is a 1 minus exponential decay function. And in contrast, the current is just an exponential decay function. So the, the, the voltage basically charges up from zero, and it gets finally to the target value, whereas the current starts off a high value, in fact, it's given by V over R, if you look at that, and it decays away until it gets to zero after an infinite time. Um, the time constant is also related to the cutoff frequency. Don't forget um, F of C equals 1 divided by 2 pi tau. So if you put tau in there, we see F of C equals to 1 divided by 2 pi RC. There's a relationship between the rise time and the bandwidth in a first order system as well, and we can work that out as well. Um, we've got the capacitor voltage now in terms of um, <coughs> um, the source voltage divided by this term, which gives us the, um, in terms of, of tau. So basically, Vc divided by Vs is just given by 1 divided by s tau plus 1. We can calculate the frequency of this, so basically this is the transfer function. We can calculate the frequency response of this by substituting in s equals j omega, right? So we put the j omega in um, into that expression. And now what we want to do is we want to put in the, um, the omega as 1 over tau. So let's do that. So that corresponds to frequency is 1 divided by 2 pi tau, of course, where frequency is going to be the minus 3 dB bandwidth. So rearranging all of this. So basically what we're going to do now <coughs> is say, <coughs> let's put the frequency in at the bandwidth frequency. So what we end up with now is um, an expression which is given by 1 divided by j plus 1. Now that's a bit nasty because we've got a complex number at the bottom. So in order to get rid of that, what we do is multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of what we've got at the bottom. It gives us the same expression, but then we have a real value at the bottom. So that's a nice way of breaking down uh, the system into um, a real and complex number. And we know that the modulus is basically going to be the squared 
the sum of the squares and then we take the square root divided by yeah and then we divide it by two like we had before and that basically gives us one divided by the square root of two now in db one divided by the square root of root two is going to be um, one divided by the square root of root two log to the base 10 multiplied by 20 and we end up with a value of minus 3 db so when the input frequency um, is the uh, is the bandwidth frequency we see we, the response drops by 3 db so the voltage across the capacitor again we saw the res we saw the response um, is given by um, v divided by s tau s plus 1 where tau is the, is the is, is the time constant and we we showed already that um, the inverse Laplace transform gives the form of this 1 minus e to the minus t divided by tau so let, let's now calculate um, times corresponding to reaching between 10% and 90% and this relates of course to the rise time right so the rise time is measured as the time between 10% and 90% so the time it gets to 10%, re reaching time for 10% is going to be given by 0.1. So the, basically the ratio of, of voltages is 0.1. And that's going to be given by 1 minus e to the minus time when it's at 0.1 divided by tau. So we can then work that through. And we basically want to work out what t 0.1 is. And what we can see is then we take basically natural logs of both sides of this, divide, we multiply by the tau. We see the time to get to uh, 0.1 times. So in other words, to get to 10% of the value is going to be minus tau log to the base E of 0.9. Now we do the same to get to 90% value. So 0.9 equals 1 minus E to the minus T at 0.9 divided by tau. So again, <clears throat> we, we, we rewrite the thing. Basically, we just take away, um, we put this to the other side and we take away 0 0.9. So we end up this with this time with e to the minus t 0 0.9 divided by tau equals 0 0.1. Uh, so we can rearrange that and say, what is the time for 0 0.9? And it's going to be minus tau log the base e of 0 0.1. And the rise time is going to be the difference between those two times. So it's the, it's the, it's the second one take away the first one. So it's going to be the log of, well, it's going to be minus tau log of 0 0.1 plus tau log of 0 0.9, right? Which is the same as actually doing tau log of 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.1. And we find out that comes out to about 2.197 2, 2 or something. So basically... What we can say is the following things. We see that the, the rise time is given by about 2.2 tau. Um, before, we see that the bandwidth was given by 1 divided by tau, which means tau, if we convert that to... Uh, well, and this is basically going to be the bandwidth for hertz, so we have to divide by 2 pi. And then we convert pi... Um, we, we convert frequency to... Um, well, we basically want to get tau out, so we just have to swap these two over. So we have tau equals 1 divided by 2 pi uh, frequency bandwidth. We then substitute the tau right into our expression for the rise time. And what we find is we end up with 2.1972 divided by 2 pi frequency of the bandwidth. And if you calculate that, we end up with about... 0.35 divided by um, the bandwidth and that gives you a very very simple rule of thumb for the relationship between bandwidth and rise time for first order systems of course most of this stuff you know it the only reason for ever fiddling around and looking at some of these simple relations is to just to make sure that if you've got a system that you you can have a feeling you know ha have you got roughly the right values coming out of your calculations it's very interesting 
um, or very useful to do that to just have a bit of a reality check because quite often what you'll do is do lots of MATLAB analysis for these things and come up with something which is you, you get some value out but does that really relate directly to the values that you think you've got um, so some of these rules of thumb are actually quite a useful thing so checking rise time and bandwidth of first order systems so rise time's about so if the time constant of a second, then the rise time is going to be about 2.2. 2. We can check this with a, with a step function. Um, and we can also check um, rise time and bandwidth relation as well. So, and you can do that basically on your um, Boda plot for this particular system.